What's good, Duffy gang? It's your boy Tyler LaDuff, and I'm back with another video. This is not the video that I wanted to upload after being away for a month, <laughs> essentially. Um, when I said that I have more content coming for you guys, I, I this was not in the planning. Um, before I get like super deep into this video, I know you guys clicked on it because you guys want to know, oh, what's the T? Um, and a lot of different other things. Um, let me go ahead and off and first say this. Um, I do apologize for those who follow me on Instagram and uh, the scare that I have caused. Um, I did consider um, doing a very bad thing to myself that would have been uh, permanent. Um, if you are new to this channel and you don't really know, I do suffer with uh, generalized anxiety, um, PTSD, which stands for post-traumatic stress disorder, and I um, also suffer from major depressive disorder, um, legally diagnosed with all of this stuff. And it's hard to go through uh, day by day with things. Um, those of you who have been watching my channel for a while look up to me because you see me as like a strong figure because of what I've been through, um, the diagnosis and everything and how I carry myself. Uh, to be completely honest, um, I know that I say this a lot and you guys don't believe me, but I'm not as strong as what people believe. Um, but I do try every day to get up and I do try to be a better person every day. I do try to not let life get a hold of me. And I think that's what everybody needs to do so ultimately on the internet and through my relationship and through Instagram, whatever you follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, I always try to set a good example. And yesterday was not a good example of how you should carry yourself whenever you're going through um, serious things. So I apologize for that. Um, this video isn't supposed to be making people look bad. I, it took, it took, I just, it's taking me a lot to just think about things right now just because I'm like, I don't, I can't even comprehend. I can't even understand a lot. I know you guys have tons of questions, so I'm going to try and answer these questions for you. I highly advise you to watch this full video to the very end so that you guys can understand. Cause you know, I know that, um, on YouTube, people like, We'll scroll, read comments as they're watching a the video. They may see like another video that they want to click on, but I don't want anybody's questions going unanswered. So I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can remember as possible. If there's anything that I miss, um, I'm more than likely going to get on live stream and address a lot of those different things. Um, one of the main things that I did want to address is that, uh, the engagement. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh my God, y'all are engaged. Y'all are supposed to be getting married. Um, that was real. It was genuine. I cried. I have this. It was a life changing moment for myself. And there were so many thoughts and emotions going through my head. It, it was real. So I don't want you guys to think like, oh my God, no, like, did y'all really get engaged? Like, where's the ring? I know you guys have always asked me like, oh my God, Thailand, like, where's the ring? Why are you not wearing it? Well, before COVID-19 happened, um, we, I had to go get my ring resized. It was, uh, it was too big. So I didn't want it to slip off. So I never wore it. So whenever COVID-19 happened and, um, the ring finally became available for me to pick it up, it was already too late. The stores were closed. So just to clear that up. Um, I'll go ahead and tell the story now. Um, you guys do not have to hate Anthony. You guys do not have to hate me. Um, I also want to say that there's going to be a lot of Bible skeptics out there. There's going to be a lot of um, people saying negative things. And this video isn't supposed to be meant towards those people coming to the limelight, even though they're going to come anyways. Um, it doesn't matter. I've said this before. It doesn't matter if you're heterosexual. It doesn't matter if you're homosexual, etc. People grow. They learn. They go through things. You make mistakes. You grow. You own up to it or you make it hurt you. And 
this has nothing to do with anybody's faith. It has nothing to do with anybody's religion. This doesn't exclude all of that. You grow and you learn. Point blank, period. So let's keep that in mind. Um, when me and Anthony's relationship started, it was very genuine still. The whole relationship was genuine. The relationship wasn't fake. I know people are just like, oh my God, this relationship is fake. I'm like, child, really? Um, it was definitely taken on too quickly. Um, Anthony moved in. Well, he didn't really move in. Yeah, he moved in a week after we met, but we never had any time apart from each other. Um, it was just, we met, clicked off things and started hanging out every day. Now I have watched some videos about people saying, oh yeah, it's a gay thing. Like the gay people just rush into things too quickly. Like it is like, you do know, like straight people do the same thing, right? Like I'm like, we're, we're people. We want to have our loved ones or somebody that we potentially care about or somebody that we do care about around all the time. So we want them, we want to hold them. And especially being so young, you're gonna learn that that's not the most healthiest option. My manager, she was in a relationship. She married a man that she met in a month. Married him. Had two kids. Found out that he was abusive. Got a divorce four years later. Hates herself. So these things happen. And unfortunately, that's what happened with me and Anthony's relationship. We cared about each other so much, but we both got out of some very bad relationships that we um, didn't take time to heal from. And we thought that we were going to heal each other through a relationship. That's not how that works. Um, I know that I was going to sugarcoat a lot of things throughout this video, but I feel like you guys deserve to understand what's going on in my life, especially if I put my life on the internet. That's what I signed up for. I know not everything needs to be put on the internet. Everything's not on the internet. You guys only see a fraction, a very, very, very small fraction about what goes on in my life. Um, so like I said, I don't want to leave anybody's questions unanswered. Um, so I have a right to be mad. I have a right to be angry. I'm not going to suppress my feelings because we need to keep it cute and keep it classy. We're not doing that. I'm blunt. I'm a Virgo. I'm going to say what I need to say. And that's the only way that I'm going to be able to move on and be happy. So like I said, that's how our relationship started off. That was already a red flag. Number one, red flag. Number two was that after me and Anthony did have intercourse for the first time, he kept on saying, I love you. And I asked him, don't, can you stop saying that? Like, I've only met you like three days. Like, it's only been like a couple of days, like stop saying that. But he kept on saying it over and over. That's a red flag, you guys. Please take down notes as I'm talking to you. That's red flag number two. Red flag number three is that I got fired a couple months within me meeting Anthony. I got fired from my job in January of 2019. Um, I was heartbroken. I enjoyed my job. I feel like it was very unfair. But Anthony said, I want you to do YouTube full time and I'm going to support you. And at that time, you know, like I was able to get my bills paid and da da da. Um, and I'm just like, oh my God, you really would do that? Like you would support me? And he said, yes. So that's why I took YouTube full time and I took it serious to the point where I was able to make money and I was able to, like, I could sustain with myself during this. But one of the main issues that Anthony has is feeling like he's in power. Anthony's one of those that he feels like he needs to be in charge. He feels like he needs to be in power. And if he doesn't have that, or if he feels like he can't control situations, he shuts down. And I'm the same way. I do that same exact thing. So these things clashed. But the thing is, is that I let somebody feel like they have authority and power over me. And that's what I knew was a trigger and I knew it was a red flag because whenever I started making my money and I started being able to, like he started seeing like the money that I was making, he was like, I guess it felt threatened. You know, he used to bring up with his friends and like his family all the time. Like I make my money and da, da, da and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, money does not bring happiness. I don't know if this, like if any of y'all disagree or agree with this, money will never bring happiness. Never, uh, like it only brings temporary happiness. You can buy your materialistic things, you can get out of your debt, but ultimately, Happiness comes from within the soul and it comes from within. Um, I used to tell him this all the time. You're miserable. You're miserable at your job. You're miserable with yourself. You hate yourself. You say it all the time. I read you and you agree whenever your friends are not around. Um, you agree whenever your guard is down. But whenever your guard is up, you want to be so defensive and it starts an argument. I always asked him, 
if you need me to like amp it up two times harder than what I'm doing it, just so you can go find another job, tell me, do so. But due to his current situations, he felt like he couldn't get another job because of his life choices that he decided to make growing up. Um, that's on you, you know? You help me get out of the, out of, out of the uh, rut. I'm gonna, I wanna help you get out of the rut. But you can't help somebody that does not want to be helped. Point blank, period. You guys can go to the rainbow and back, the moon and back, the universe. Hell, you can go to heaven and try and bring them up there. You can't save anybody that doesn't want to be saved. You, you can't fix them. You can't fix them with that. Um, another red flag was his friends. His friends are very, very toxic. I asked him, why do you want toxic people around? Why do you accept toxic people being in your life? Because this is not good. It's not good. Anthony always used to ask me, I think all your friends want to fuck you and that, and I'm like, but meanwhile, it's his friends that want to smash me. And I'm like, dude, you see this. Like, for instance, this may be, I don't know if it's going to be graphic or anything like that for anybody, but disclaimer, skip this part if you are very sensitive. Um, I used to get super drunk. I used to go out and then come home and be super drunk. And Anthony had a certain friend over and he was weird. He used to like, as I'm laying in my bed or like laying on my couch, I'm just super like vulnerable. He would dry it and he would dry hump me while I'm laying down. And I always was like, Anthony, this is your friend, get in control of your friend, but he wouldn't. And we got into an argument about that. And he said, it's because I'm waiting for you to say something. And I'm like, what? If I'm telling you get off or if I'm vulnerable and I need you to be like, Get him off of me. I don't need this. Please move him. Because, again, if you've been watching this channel a long time, you guys know what I've been through in life. That's just highly unacceptable. And it has nothing, like, again, I'm saying, like, it has nothing to do with majority Anthony, but the enabling of bad behaviors, the enabling of toxicity, the enabling of your friends are always trying to go fight or trying to do this and it's just, it's just, it's toxic. Always saying like, oh, I got hands. I'm going to throw hands. Like all this brought out the toxicity within me. Like it started making me toxic. I love people and I genuinely have a deep rooted connection with the human race. And Anthony always say, why do you care about people so much? Why are you so, because I want to make a mark on this world and I want to make a positive mark. But whenever you allow somebody in that's very toxic, it makes you toxic. And I will not deny that it made me toxic. And I'm not talking about the YouTube videos that we filmed or like any type of pranks. There's no type of prank on this world that would put a dent in our relationship. Now, I should have put this in the beginning of the video, but just for part of the disclaimer, YouTube has nothing to do with this relationship whatsoever. It never made a dent in this relationship. It never caused anybody to want to fall out, nothing. So social media has nothing to do with this. Um, it's normal couple things that have happened, you know? And as I'm talking to Anthony to try and get him to understand things, he doesn't want to understand them. It's his way or the highway. And if you do not conform, it's like, there's an argument there. So I compromised a lot, I started cutting off friends, started making adjustments to my lifestyle, my personality, but Eventually, whenever I started realizing that he was taking me for granted, he was taking a lot of things for granted, um, I started putting my foot down. I'm like, I'm not changing myself for things that don't need to be changed whenever you are enabling toxicity into this relationship. And I'm telling you and I'm calling you out and I'm crying for help and helping you try to understand that things are just toxic right now. You need to remove this before because your relationship is in jeopardy. And if you don't want to fight for the relationship, that says a lot about you. I'm analyzing, I'm staying. I don't have to do that. I don't have to stay. I don't have to continue fighting. I don't have to do any of that. But I generally want to invest in the relationship because I don't like wasting my time. I need you to be on the same page with me. And he used to be like, it's just 50-50. Whatever you do to me, I do to you. And da, da, da. I think he needed to reevaluate what 50-50 actually is. Because it was not 50-50. He had this thing where... If he goes to work, I need to be at home and cooking clean. I need to take care of the dogs. 
I need to go grocery shopping. I need to cook three meals a day. I forgot what type of relationship that's called. I think it starts with a G, but basically he wanted me to be the quote unquote old school female of the house, take care of the house while he goes to work. I have a job too. Social media is my job. Before I even met Anthony, social media was my job. I have my degree. I have my own job. Just because I got fired does not mean that I couldn't have went to go get my own job. He said that he wanted to support me to do YouTube full time. And I'm like, I'll take the offer and I'll work as hard as I can with YouTube to make sure that bills are paid and that we're going to be having a good time. And I did. And I provided. He didn't like that. One of the other things that put a dent in it was the more money I made, the more he felt, oh my goodness, like shake it, shook it. And I never believed that money should ruin a relationship ever. But you guys know that I started OnlyFans. I started OnlyFans because YouTube doesn't really allow you to show a certain side of yourself. And I always thought that, you know, I don't mind showing a different side of myself. Um, OnlyFans is available if you guys would like to pay for content. Please come see. I'm more than happy to express myself in a different way while also making content on YouTube. So also subscribe to my OnlyFans if you have not yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, OnlyFans pays way more than YouTube. Way, 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 way more. Um, so as he started seeing how much money I was making on that, I started getting things taken care of. I started, I paid off my debt. Uh, was helping him pay off his debt. Uh, I took him clothes shopping, bought him a $114 vape, bought him $600 worth of clothes, bought him $200 worth of new shoes, bought him $300 new AirPods. You know what I'm saying? Like all these things add up, but he had the audacity to tell me, oh, you're going to give me money so I can go on a shopping spree? And I'm like, I just spent almost, damn near $1,000 on you and you have the audacity to talk about you need to go on a shopping spree? Have you lost your mind? Like, what, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, you know, two days ago, one of the biggest arguments that blew up was that after I took him shopping and spent $500 on him this day or $600, um, I bought myself $90 cologne. He got upset, yelled at me, cussed me the fuck out in the mall. So guess what I did? You know, I'm a Virgo, baby. I cussed him the fuck out too. And I said, come on. So we got into a big heated ass argument because it's like, you complain about the AirPods that you bought me, but da, 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 and you're buying cologne. I'm like, didn't I just spend $600 on you today? Can I please spend some money on myself? What? Have you lost it? Have you completely lost your mind? What? He's like, you need to give me half of whatever you're making so I can go buy my stuff. And I'm like, wow, money is the root to all evil. This is crazy. And one of the biggest things that I never opened up to you guys with that also put a damper in my perception of the relationship is that back in December of 2019, we got into an argument as well, which I told him to get out of my apartment and he got out. That same night, he went to my stalker's house. He made friends with my stalker. I told him I don't feel comfortable. I'm told, I told him before that whole situation happened. I told him, I don't feel comfortable with you talking to my stalker. I don't even know why you would want to be friends with him. I know you met friends and he was just like, oh yeah, um, such and such knows you and da da da. And I'm like, that's my stalker. Like nip that in the butt. You should have nipped that in the butt. You want to complain about my friends and how I shouldn't have friends and that all my friends want to F me, but yet you're making friends with my stalker. So whenever we argued, out of everybody's house that you could have went to, you went to my stalker's house. Because God knows what you did there. I don't even know. My stalker's a hoe. I do know that. To put a huge damper into my perception of how he operates. But yet, we made up. And I was able to push that to the side for him to propose to me in January. Cried. So many emotions are going through my head, as in like, where's his maturity? If I, I need to make sure that there are ground, like we are grounded before I sign the papers. Because if you're already trying to be manipulative and controlling, and I haven't even signed the papers yet, God knows what you would do whenever I sign the papers to get married. But also you propose to me and I do love you and I wanna live the rest of my life with you. 
but I can't be the one that's constantly fighting, the one who's constantly trying to make you better, the one that's constantly trying to push you to do better, to help you understand things, and you're dismissing me, getting angry, storming outside, gonna go get drunk and driving, going to Stalker's house, going cussing me the fuck out, telling me to fight, and da da da. And I'm like, I'm not going to jail behind harming my, my spouse. I, I'm not doing that. I can't. Especially if my spouse is squaring up to me like this. And I'm like, you're squaring up to me like this? I can't even take you serious if you're squaring up like this. Tuck your chin. Put your arms down. Stop. Don't be squatting all the way to the ground like you're about to do squats. Like I'm like, there has to be some mental disorders here. And... As I'm in this relationship, I'm realizing how it is deteriorating me as a person. I started slacking on YouTube a lot. Um, I started going to the doctor and my blood pressure was high, higher than it has ever been in my life. Um, if you guys don't know, my best friend passed away. Um, my best friend passed away in 2013. It triggered me to have PTSD. Um, she took her life. Very close friend of mine. And um, my blood pressure now is higher than back then. That should say something. From February of 2020 to April of 2020, I gained 30 pounds unhealthily. That's not normal. It's not normal. There's definitely things. It, it just started taking a mental toll. He started having anger outbursts, started just whatever, whatever, whatever over it. And I'm like, Anthony, I can't keep arguing. I can't keep having my blood pressure sky rise because you know what you're supposed to be doing. You know that you're being toxic here, but yet you're ready to point the finger whenever I get triggered. Because when you tell somebody to do something over and over and over, you start getting upset at the fact that they're not listening. It makes you angry. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't keep saying to fix this, and you're saying, I'm going to fix it, but you never fix it, and it constantly puts a damper in the relationship. There's there's nothing that I can do about that, but yet, he's going to go tell his friends things about me and, and whatever, whatever, and it's not even full of stories, talking about how I'm just, I'm abusive, and I'm this and that, and I'm like, dude. So... I'm good at reading people, so I always bring these things up. And I'm like, I bet y'all haven't heard the real story, huh? Let me tell you. Then they're like, oh, wow, you didn't say that. And I'm like, there's two sides to every story. Anthony has a right to tell his side of the story if he wanted to. But the thing is, is that when you are just pointing fingers at one person, there's more than likely things that are hidden underneath that you're not saying about yourself. And I'm here to say... I haven't been the most perfect person just because of me getting triggered. There's better ways that I could have handled it. There's better ways that I could have kept my cool about a lot of things, but I didn't. I got tired of repeating myself. I got tired of fighting for a relationship that it felt like it wasn't being fought for equally because there's more to relationships than let's smash being a comfort zone. No, I don't want to waste my time. I want you to be here forever. When I get in a relationship, I want to... I want to settle down. I want to have my life going with you. But I can't have my life going with a mentally der deranged person. And this isn't saying that Anthony and I can't get back together anytime down the road. Um, we talked today. But there's just so many things that need to be worked on. So many toxic things that he knows. And... A lot of this doesn't even stem from me. It stems from his childhood. It stems from his parents. It stems from his family. And it stems from things that, ha that are happening within him that if he doesn't get into full grasp with right now, because we are grown, essentially. I still see us as very young adults. Um, I know people are like, oh my God, you're turning 22, 23. Like, you're getting so old. I'm like, Tony, you have so much life to live. Like, 22, 23, like, I'm, I'm 22. I'm like, I'm like a baby. I have so much to learn. You have so much to learn. You're not old. Trust me, you're not old. But getting a relationship and acting like you're old is just, there's so much life to live. There's so much to see. There's so much to prosper. But I can't keep having somebody make excuses for themselves because they don't want to own up to 
their mistakes. They don't want to own up for themselves. They don't want to own up and take accountability for things that are going on in their life, but they want to push it on you. Anthony got into a relationship saying that you should fix me. The relationship is helping me feel happy. I'm like, no. I said, where is true happiness coming from? True happiness isn't coming from you being with me because that's just masking. You're using somebody to help you feel happy when happiness comes from within you. There is nothing that I can do to change him. There's nothing I can do or say to change him. There's things that I can do to influence him, but that's it. That's to stop smoking. Stop smoking so much. I want to see you do better. I don't want to see you deteriorate on a bed due to lung cancer because you're, you can't put down those cancer sticks because of the things that you're running away from. But that's an argument. Don't tell me what to do. I don't need to do that. But no, but then whenever he has his guard down, yeah, I need to stop doing these things. And I'm like, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want an argument to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are real life things, like proposals, like marriage, like these things are real. This is real life. Saying, oh, let's fight and let's, let's throw hands. I'm like, how old are we? How old are we? Seriously, this is not high school. This is not your friend that you're trying to harm. This isn't somebody on the side of the street that did us wrong. You are trying to harm your spouse. But I'm not the one. So I'm like, if you want to swing, you can swing most definitely. But it's not going to be good in your favor. But I'm not going to ruin my life over somebody that hates themselves. And it's almost like I feel very sad and I feel like with my me being a Virgo and me being an empath, I wanted to help. I wanted to see positive change. I stayed in the relationship longer than what I should have and tolerated a lot, but I shouldn't have. And Anthony's not a bad person. He just has a lot of things that he needs to let go of. He needs to grow and prosper from. And you know, there's not any amount of explaining that is going to happen in this video to help anybody get a good picture of what goes on behind closed doors because the only people that truly know what goes on behind closed doors is me and Anthony. This was our relationship. I spent more time with Anthony the past two years than I have with my own mother. It's crazy. So even though I'm telling my story and Anthony tells his story, it's it's like, okay, so who? Like, this is adult. These are real things. And I know a lot of YouTube couples that break up get on here and they bash one another and da, 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 but this is real. This is real life. And this is about the most realest I've been with y'all in a very long time. My friends and the people in my life has seen Anthony and what he does and how he acts and they supported us at first but then realized they used a very, like none of them in a group would say this, but they're like, you're here and he's here. And like, he's not a bad person, but y'all are on two different spectrums. Y'all are on two different wavelengths. Y'all are in two different mindsets to the point where he's just weighing you down. And I and honestly, I agree because I thought about this um, last year, kind of close towards our anniversary. I was like, I feel like you're weighing me down in life. Um, I can't keep on picking up your slack. I can't keep on paying money to fix things for you or stressing myself and breaking my back for you when you don't want to get yourself together. And it's like, how do I do that? So with the argument that happened, which led to our breakup, because it's something so small, but so many big things were that led up to it was like, I'm over it. I'm done, dude. I can't do this. I'm done. So to see things just go down the drain and just, it's over. It hurt me. Like the breakup triggered my PTSD probably, triggered the loss that I've had. And I just... It, it broke me because I hate wasting my time and I hate feeling like I hurt somebody and I hate feeling hurt and 
I wanted to end it. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't handle it properly. I'm so sorry for the people that have hurt during this in these past few hours. I know a lot of people were saying, oh my God, is this a prank? And then I'm like, nope. It's not. I wish it was. I wish life was pranking me. I woke up this morning and felt sick. Felt sick. The person who stopped me was my friend Nick. He helped me. He came and he stayed the night. We talked and I was ready. But you should never make a permanent decision over somebody or you shouldn't make a permanent decision in general. You shouldn't. And I set a very bad example and I'm so sorry for everybody. I'm so sorry for my actions. I'm so sorry because I feel like I let people down. I wanted to be a positive role model always. And I wanted to break down barriers and I wanted to experience different, uh, help people see a different side, especially when you guys message me. When you guys message me y'all's personal things that go on in y'all's lives, I definitely feel it. And I want to just sometimes just hold you and I want to take away so much pain and anguish and just anything that y'all are going through because this world is crazy. But this is Duffy Gang and we are a family and I hope that you guys have subscribed for me. Um, this channel has always been timely Duff. I'm giving you guys insight about what goes on in my life. Um, I love you guys to hell and back. I just wish things would have ended differently and I hope I always have you guys' support and I need to keep up. I need to and get you guys in the loop about what goes on in my life. And I'm so sorry for anybody that I've scared and I'm so sorry for everything. So I love you guys. Like I said, if there's anything that I missed, I will get on live stream. I don't think there's any need to make another video. I'll probably make another follow-up video um, explaining what goes on here now and vlog more and more content is going to be coming. Um, I do feel like there was a, a heavy burden and a heavy lift lifted off of me. And I love you guys so much. And I love Anthony, but I don't love toxicity. And I don't love being put through things that are affecting my health, my mental health, emotional, physical well-being. I can't, can't do it. So. I love you guys. This is an update of my life. Just know that I'm good and I hope you guys are good as well. I think I said enough of what I need to say without trying to sound uh, rude, without trying to sound like I'm throwing anybody underneath the bus. I just, there's a lot that went on in this relationship that I was fed up with. This toxicity, eventually poison takes over and it ends things if you don't fix it and take the poison out, so. I love you guys so much. If you are new here, subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Um, like this video if you like it. And I'll see y'all in the next video. I love y'all so much. Thank you. Goodbye.